Um, so I'm going to be reading from his story, Parenting License, which was published in the March, April 2019 issue. Um, and like most of us, I will just be reading part of the story. Parenting License. When Melanie found out she was pregnant, she was still at least two years away from getting her parenting license. The only class she had taken was attachment parenting, and she wasn't even sure she had passed that. She sat in the examination room, staring blankly at the doctor, not quite processing what he had just said. Her placement test for toddler discipline lay on her lap, still unfinished. It was an essay question, her least favorite kind. You're in the playground, and your two-year-old pushes another child off the slide. What would be the appropriate reaction according to your preferred parenting philosophy? Melanie's answer so far consisted of one sentence, pretend he's not my kid, which she had been trying to erase when the doctor walked in. When he gave her the news, her pencil dropped from her fingers, rolled across the examination table, and bounced on the tiled floor. Ms. Radcliffe, Dr. Faisal put the chart down and leaned forward. Melanie turned over the placement test so he couldn't see it. I hope you understand how serious this is. Melanie blinked at him. Nausea roiled through her, as it had for the past month, and now she knew why. I can't be pregnant, she said. But even as she said it, dates and events rolled through her mind, and she knew she was. She took a deep, gasping breath. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> Dr. Faisal clearly didn't believe her, but he smiled kindly. I've taken the liberty of checking on your course progress. You've passed attachment parenting, and you're signed up for sleep training and breastfeeding, which is good. But you don't have time to take the rest of the classes in just seven months. Does your husband have a license by any chance? Melanie winced. Matt was a firm believer in the licensing program. She had heard him rant for hours about people who thought they could have kids without any clue what they were doing. She knew he had his reasons, but he was so fixated on the subject that the thought of arguing with him about it was exhausting. So she hadn't argued. She hadn't even thought seriously about whether she wanted to argue. She had simply agreed that they would both get licenses before she got pregnant. It wasn't like she would have to explain her decision. Everyone in her life would think she was doing the right thing. Well, everyone except Linda. The doctor was still waiting. She shook her head. Dr. Faisal looked unsurprised, and a flush crept over Melanie's cheeks. She wished she hadn't chosen to dress in jeans and a slightly stained t-shirt today. A part of her wanted to pull out her college degree and wave it at him. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not irresponsible and careless. I'm, I'm the kind of person who prepares for life. I will be a good mother. Though on second thought, that would probably create the opposite of the impression she wanted. Besides, she could hear Matt's voice in her head. Just because you're a nice person with good intentions, that doesn't mean you can be trusted with children. Children are hard. If good intentions don't equip you to train a dog or give a massage, why would they enable you to raise a human being? She opened her mouth, but Dr. Faisal had already moved on, his voice smooth and carefully non-judgmental. In order to be eligible for benefits, at least one parent needs to be licensed. Your insurance policy is very clear. They won't cover you if you have a child without getting licensed first. We can work out a payment plan, Melanie said, wishing again that she was wearing a business suit. <coughs> Don't worry. That's not what I'm concerned about. The statistics about children born to unlicensed parents, well, never mind. Just make sure you get your license as soon as possible. Most of the pediatricians in this area won't accept unlicensed parents into their practice. Melanie's stomach turned over and she bolted for the door, papers scattering as she went. She twisted the knob twice, then realized she was turning it the wrong way, just before she threw up all over the shiny blue-white floor of the examination room. Melanie had been planning to wait until after dinner before talking to Matt, but with every bite and every word, her tension grew. When Matt started telling her about the new, unworkable computer system they were installing in his office, which he thought was the most stressful thing that was going to happen to him that week, she couldn't take it. She blurted it out. I'm pregnant. Matt looked like she punched him in the stomach. He put his fork down and stared at her with his mouth hanging open, which had the unfortunate effect of revealing the chewed up chicken still in his mouth, which had an even more unfortunate effect on Melanie's growing nausea. Now that she knew there was a reason for the roiling in her stomach, it had become impossible to ignore. How, Matt said finally. His accusatory tone sparked a welcome rage in Melanie. Unfortunately, the rage was completely unwarranted. She had already figured out the how, and it was in fact her fault. That's not important, she snapped. This is not about placing blame. Matt's eyes widened. 
Did you, Melanie, I know you weren't thrilled about waiting, but did you do this on purpose? Of course not. Good, now she was entitled to be angry. Melanie rose to her feet. How can you say that? I would never do that to you. Matt took a deep breath and rested his head in his hands. Of course you wouldn't. I'm sorry, just give me a minute to think. Worse and worse. Because while it was true that Melanie hadn't deliberately done anything, she couldn't swear that her carelessness hadn't been influenced by her lack of commitment to the licensing program. And the more she thought about it, the less sure she was. Maybe Linda was right, and she shouldn't have agreed to get licensed so easily. But she and Matt had an unspoken rule. Their arguments were won by whoever cared the most. Melanie had known that her periodic uncertainty about the licensing program, which was mostly due to Linda's influence anyhow, was no match for Matt's unwavering conviction. I'm the one who's sorry, Melanie said. I know this wasn't the plan, but it will be okay. There are organizations to support people who refuse to get licenses. They'll provide financial aid. We're not refusing. Matt lifted his head, and she saw that his eyes were wet. I'm not going to pretend to be one of those morons who are against the licensing program. You know how I feel about this. Even now, five years after she met him, Matt didn't talk much about his childhood. She knew he'd been in and out of foster homes, and she knew his biological mother had been arrested for child neglect. But he tended to act as if his life had started at the age of nine, when he'd been adopted by a wonderful, if slightly overbearing, family. She knew his birth mother had broken his leg once. When she'd asked about it, he'd said, I was a wild kid, and she didn't know how to deal with me. But then his face had closed up, and she'd never asked again. But she had thought about it when they started the licensing program. Her best friend, Linda, had urged her to reconsider. She was the one who had told Melanie about the programs for conscientious objectors. But Melanie had remembered Matt's face, his careful, focused attention on the course schedule, his firm nod when the introductory lecturer had said, would you drive a car without lessons and assume you could figure it out as you went along? It had never been up for discussion. It still wasn't. So, forget about the conscientious objector programs. The payment issue was something they would figure out together, even if she had no idea how. Matt had yet seen the doctor's bill, maybe it would be up for discussion once he did. But Melanie doubted it. Compromise had never been their strong point. We'll find a solution, she said weakly. I just, excuse me. Unfortunately, she didn't think well while puking, so no hint of a solution was forthcoming that night. The next day, Melanie called in sick to work and met Linda for coffee instead. She was sick, though apparently she was going to be sick for the next two months. It wasn't like she could just stop going to work during that time, something else to figure out later. Good for you, Linda declared with unfeigned delight. I didn't do it on purpose. Melanie had said this so many times that it sounded practiced, which made it sound like a lie. Linda went on without poison, without buzzing. Linda was very intelligent, but she had difficulty processing words that didn't fit her worldview. In a few years, the licensing program will be history anyhow. There's a lawsuit winding its way to the Supreme Court right now. If I had a few years, Melanie said, I could get a license. But you don't need a license. Linda leaned forward, almost knocking over Melanie's still full coffee. Don't buy into the propaganda. You don't need a bunch of so-called experts telling you how to raise your children. I need someone to tell me how, Melanie's voice rose. I'm not ready to be a mother. I don't even know how to change a diaper. Babies don't need diapers, Linda sat back. Diapers are only part of the licensing program because of corporate sponsors. <laughs> this is not helpful. <laughs> Melanie forced herself to take a sip of her now lukewarm coffee. Like everything else in her life, it made her want to puke. I don't have the faintest clue of what to do right now. What vitamins should I be taking? What foods should I be avoiding? There are at least 200 books about how to be pregnant, and I haven't read a single one. Calm down, Linda said. If I had done the licensing program, my head would have been stuffed with all the stupid information about allergy prevention they believed five years ago. Instead, I asked all my questions on the Earth Moms group, and guess what? Now even the doctors are saying I was right. Melanie had heard a lot about Linda's Earth Mom group over the years, and she was pretty sure they weren't going to help her. She said, I respect your parenting style, but I'm a little more conventional. I want to use diapers, Linda sighed, and baby food, Linda snorted. And I want my baby to sleep through the night. Linda jerked back and Melanie stopped, wondering if her friend was about to walk out. Linda took a deep breath and closed her eyes. You'll do whatever's best for you, she said, with the air of someone making a very generous, very tolerant concession. <laughs> if you want to be more traditional about it, you still don't need to take classes. You'll learn the way women have learned for centuries, from your mother. My mother gave me formula. 
applause. Don't worry, Linda said less convincingly. We'll figure something out. 